uh, Horatio's behind me in that 530i, and I, just, I, I feel like I just leave him a little bit. Uh, he may not be expecting it. I do anticipate a lot of people actually asking the question, should I buy the base i5 or should I go with the base 5 series? And that's exactly what I'm trying to determine today. Hey guys, welcome back to the BMW Blog YouTube channel and welcome to South Carolina. I'm actually here with Nate because today we're doing something very different. What's that, Nate? Well, we're going to do a little comparison between the new i5 and the 530i. All right, so this is going to be my car for a little bit. At some point, we're going to swap cars and kind of compare impressions, right? I drove that car before, so of course, I'm quite familiar, but this is my first time actually driving the 530i version, which is a four-cylinder 5 Series, and yours will be an all-electric car, right? Yeah, exactly, and it has 335 horsepower, 295 foot-pounds of torque, and it does 0 to 60 in 5.7. All right, so let me tell you about mine then. So 255 horsepower, same pounds feet of torque, 295, and it does zero to 60 in 5.9 seconds. So the question is, why are they so similar? Well, they're very similar because they're both rear wheel drive. Okay. They're very similar in the power range, but yours has the benefit of being a little bit lighter. A little bit, I would say about a thousand pounds lighter. So yours is almost 5,000 pounds, which is unbelievable for a five series. Mine is 4,000 pounds, so that's why I'm kind of excited about this one because I feel like it'll be a lot more fun than yours, even though your install acceleration will be probably a little bit better. That's where I think this is going to be, have that benefit of that electric drive chain that torques down low to make up for that extra weight. And then also, I also think that because I'm going to be paying a lot less than you, this might be the best choice in the end. Mine cost about $57,000. Yeah, and this is up 66000 so that's, that's getting a little pricey. All right, so what's next for us today? Well, let's get behind the wheel and go see how these perform. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so here we go. I'm in the BMW 530i 2024, of course, the G60. Nate in front of me, he's driving the E-Drive 40. So two 5 Series with a rear wheel drive. Of course, the drivetrains are completely different. This is a B48 2.0 liter engine, and that's an all electric drivetrain. But there are a few similarities, right? So both are built on the same architecture, and that's kind of the idea of the test drive today, of this comparison. We wanted to see if you should be buying the gasoline version of the 5 Series, or if you should go all in with the i5 all electric. So let's talk about my car first because we're going to be driving the same roads and then we're going to swap cars and I'm going to tell you once again what I think about the i5 E40. So first of all, let me go into sport mode because I always like to do that initially. All right, so sport mode right now. Once again, 255 horsepower, so about 70, 75 horsepower less than on the i5 E Drive 40. Same pounds feet of torque, 295. This car, it's about 0.2 seconds slower than the i5, so 5.9 seconds, but it's actually about a thousand pounds lighter. This i5 has 335 horsepower and 295 foot-pounds of torque. It is a little bit heavy, but all of that electric torque down low should compensate for that. We are heading up to one of the mountain roads here in South Carolina, where I can test out this M Sport suspension on this vehicle which has air suspension in the rear, and it is 10 millimeters lower than normal, and was specifically designed for the US market. The car is quiet, which is a little weird for me. I don't usually drive EVs. The one thing that is traditional BMW about this i5 is that it is rear wheel drive. It gives it that good balanced feeling that you expect from BMWs 50-50 weight distribution that has been historically their call sign. Just check these roads out. They are gorgeous. The front end feel is really good on this car. It feels very planted. Oh, the acceleration out of the corners. Wow. Just really good. 295 foot-pounds of torque whenever you need it. So coming out of the corners, it just gets up and goes. Uh, Horatio's behind me in that 530i, and I, just, I, I feel like I just leave him a little bit. Uh, he may not be expecting it, but it is quick. 
he definitely has a little bit the advantage of that instant torque it takes a little bit longer for me to build up to get the full torque in his case it's nearly instant if not instant so it's always going to be quicker off the line it's always going to be quicker going to corners and exiting so first of all it's got the m sport suspension so it's not the top suspension it has coil springs and it is 10 millimeters lower because it's the m sport suspension of course if you're going for the i5 e drive 40 you can spec the m sport suspension with a rear air suspension and that's going to change the driving behavior quite a bit there is another base suspension that BMW offers in the 5 Series, but we haven't had a chance to try that one out. So, so far, we've tried the adaptive suspension in the i5 M60, we tried the M Sport with the air suspension in the back, and now we're trying this one, which essentially is a cold spring suspension. Of course, it's going to be a little bit bouncier on the road. The air suspension really does well, especially if you're going over imperfect roads or for maybe bumps and all of that. Now turning in, actually the car despite being quite heavy, it is quite nimble. I mean honestly I don't get a lot of body roll, it is, the chassis is quite stiff actually. I know they've emphasized this quite a bit with the new 5 Series and the i5. They spent a little bit of time making sure that it's dialed in, that it's stiff enough, that it's still a BMW and it's not too soft. Of course if you want to get something softer you can always go up to a 7 Series or an i7. This car also has the rear axle steering. So the integral active steering as they call it which is quite nice because it does help when you're cornering it also helps within city center so if you're driving the low speeds you will be able to maneuver the car a lot easier i've talked about this in the past quite a bit then of course if you go at higher speeds you will present some advantages as well brakes i have the m sport brakes they're actually quite good considering the weight that i'm carrying you know I'm not sure if you can see Nate in front of me right now, but you know, I'm slowly building up his power and he's already about 100 yards ahead of me and he's not even pushing the car from what I can tell. A Horatio behind me in the 530i, probably talking all the specs and numbers. Like I said, 335 horsepower, 295 foot pounds of torque, zero to 60 at 5.7, which isn't the fastest electric vehicle out there but it doesn't feel like that when I'm up on these mountain roads. Like I was saying there, it just loves to get up and out of the corners. Absolutely gorgeous here. Wow, what a view. The seats hold you in nicely. Uh, it feels very comfortable. It's got that traditional BMW sporty seat feel, so you get that lumbar and side supports. Position's great. I love these steering wheels with the flat bottom on it. Just keeps it uh, out of my knees. I am almost over 6'2", so I get uh, all, I need all the room I can get out of here. The interior is fantastic in here. The ambient light bars throughout are so well integrated into this. Um, I'm in sport mode right now, and it shows the M, M colors from red to blue to dark blue. Um, it is a cool look wow brakes are good uh, this does have a pretty aggressive regen braking so you do feel that on your initial let off of the throttle but whenever you get on the brakes uh, it, it it does a good job of stopping this heavy car uh, this is so beautiful up here I'm just loving this fall weather all right, so let's talk about the driving experience. Immediately, we're gonna focus on the steering, right? And I can tell you right now that it does feel a little bit numb. I mean, maybe I was used to the ones in M2 cars, like the M Performance cars, and I haven't been in a base BMW in a very long time, like a 330i, but it is quite artificial, honestly. It's very, very soft. Of course, it's a 5 Series, so it's not supposed to be a very sporty car, but nonetheless, I do miss that BMW steering feedback, especially when you're cording it here, right? You want to be as precise as possible. I'm going through some nice twists here. I'm following Nate in front of me. The M Sport suspension's really good. Uh, very balanced as it corners. A lot of times you get a little bit of understeer on these bigger, heavier cars. Front end feels really good though. It really dives into the heads of those corners and it's really solid. But wow, the acceleration on the corner, that's, that's fun. And that quiet, just so quiet. 
All right, so let me talk about the engine a little bit because this engine has been used in a lot of new BMWs and older one as well. It's the B48, it's the very same engine that can be down-tuned, can be tuned up, and essentially you can use it in different applications and of course in different cars. This is the base BMW 5 Series, at least for the US. Of course, you will be getting a 540i, which is a six cylinder, but from a price standpoint, the 530i was always one of the most popular choices in the 5 Series lineup. So this is why we're actually testing this one today. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time to get that power to kick in. I mean, the turbo lag on the B48, it's nothing new really. I mean, it's something that I've experienced in the past and I'm feeling this one once again in the 530i. So every time I test a B48, you know, I'm always asking myself the same question. Is it enough power for a car of this size, right? So once again, this is a 4,000 pounds car. It is not lightweight by any means and it's got 255 horsepower, as I mentioned earlier. Is it enough? For daily driving, I would say yes, but if you wanna have some fun on some curvy roads, I would say it feels a little bit underpowered. Of course, if you're keeping the car wrapped up, as you might be able to hear this, and also being all in the M Sport setting, then you might be getting a little bit more fun out of the car. Engine sound, once again, 2.0 liter, twin turbo, it's not gonna be that exciting and if you want to get a lot more sound out of your car then you should probably wait for the 540i with the six cylinder b58 which i just drove earlier today in the x550e but overall this car is not meant to be a track weapon a track warrior or even a weekend fun car if you like the torque curve is very linear which is nice so as i apply just a little throttle you know it doesn't feel like it's jumping out of its shoes it's very much a, a linear throttle response. A lot of times the, in electric vehicles, these become kind of on off switches. And this is definitely give you, gives you a full throttle feel. So of course, by now you might be wondering, why are you crazy? Why are you comparing the two cars? I mean, they're very, very different. And we've said it in the intro video because a lot of people don't really care about the drivetrain choice. They might be wondering what's the performance of the car? What's the price point? And I would say the price point will be the main driver when it comes to buying a BMW these days, right? You're always looking to get the best deal on a car. You're always looking for the cheapest car. And clearly the 530i is the cheaper version when it comes to the two. I think it's about 9,000 cheaper than the base i5 e40 so i do anticipate a lot of people actually asking the question should i buy the base i5 or should i go with the base 5 series and that's exactly what we're trying to determine today when i'm going to swap into the other car i'm going to be able to tell you what it feels like especially on this loop because we're going to turn around and do exactly the same loop so it'll be an apples to apples comparison so I don't have the weight figure in front of me compared to the G30 530i, but I'm assuming because the car is just slightly bigger than the previous one, it might be a little bit heavier, probably not by much, but I'll make sure to leave that on the screen so we have a fair comparison. Overall, I feel like the cars, they're quite similar. I mean, I drove a 530i recently actually, and it kind of feels the same way, it has the same engine, and there is isn't much of a difference when it comes to that. Of course, styling and all of that, they are extremely, extremely different, and I don't think we're going to focus too much on the design today because we've touched on that quite a bit. We just kind of wanted to really focus on the driving experience. So let me change the mind mode. So let me go into the efficient mode, and of course, I can sense immediately the car changing its attitude it's a lot softer it feels like there is a lot less power and the overall car is just not as stiff as in the m sport mode of course this is nothing new i've talked about this quite a bit in the past so if you just want to cruise i would say this is the perfect setting it's a very comfy ride you are getting a lot more body roll so if you travel with somebody in the back maybe you would like a, a stiffer car than this one. I mean, the body roll, it's definitely there. I do like the side support, the bolster support from the seats. I've always said that BMW does some really, really great M Sport seats. I wish we had the same seats in the BMW iX. That's kind of the only thing that I'm lacking in that car. But enough with the comfy ride. How about we go into sport because that's what BMWs are really all about. Sport, let me do a little bit of configuration here. So. Everything it's in sport, sport plus. How about we do sport plus? Everything sport plus. 
let's not do DSC off because you can get in trouble quickly here. And then here we go. The M Sport suspension is definitely coming into play up here. This car feels so balanced. We got a tight one here. Let's see how she goes around it. Yeah, that is nice, really nice. One thing I personally don't like about with some of these newer vehicles is I do sit really low in this big car. Like I said, I'm six foot two, yet the hood feels like it's almost at my eye line. The one downside though to having a sportier EV vehicle is when I left our home base at the Grand Bohemian, it said I had 211 miles of range. I've gone maybe 10 miles now or so, and I'm at 176. Um, so when you do get into that throttle, it does eat up the, the mileage quite a bit. Now, day-to-day -day driving, you know, when you wake up with a full charge every day because you're charging in your garage, not a big deal. But if you want to go do a long road trip, that's something that you'll have to take into account. Now, with the 530i that Horatio's driving with, or behind me, you don't have to do that. But let's push the car a little bit to see what it can do. So maybe you're able to see from the footage, you can see nice turning into the corner. You know, steering, not too bad. You know, decent feedback right there. And of course, it takes a little bit of time to build up going up the hill. Another nice twist right here, turning in quite nicely, actually. Of course, body roll still there. But let's push the car a little bit more, and I'm gonna change. Maybe you might have seen there was a little bit of a rear wheel spin right there. I mean, that's why I enjoy the rear wheel drive BMW this morning, the X-Tribes, because you get a little bit more play in the back. If you keep the Nandy controls on, nothing's gonna happen, especially because I'm running on performance tires and they're quite sticky. So that's the nice part about this one. But yeah, that's why I kind of wanted to test this one. They asked me earlier, do you want the 530i with the rear wheel drive? Do you want the X-Drive? Uh, and I said, you know, just give me the rear wheel drive because I want to have some fun. I want to, you know, spin that rear if I can. I'm going to try not to do it too much. I mean, of course, I can turn up the DSC, but I feel like this might not be the wisest thing to do today. It's quite dangerous here. This car is a lot of fun. That instant torque of the electric motors, the M Sport suspension, all work together to make this feel very lively and a very fun car. That's the thing with the i5, if I remember correctly. When you go into the corner, you can actually exit quite quickly out of it. This one takes a little bit of time. You always got to downshift to make sure that the car is really revved up in order to give you that power immediately. So this is why I feel like I'm going to have a lot more fun with the i5, to be honest. Now, will I like it over the traditional 530i? I don't know. Um, but I am here to find out. So I'm going to swap with Horatio really quick and see how it feels. All right, so we're going to do one more push here on these roads and then I'm going to swap cars with Nate. And I want to see what he thinks about this one because honestly, we haven't scripted this one. So I'm probably going to have a completely different review than he has. Uh, I'm focusing more on the technical details. I'm kind of curious to see what he thinks about this car in his own terms. So nothing was scripted. We didn't agree beforehand on what we should we cover. We said, let's just get behind the wheel and kind of see how different they are or how similar they are. And that's exactly what we plan on doing. So with that being said, let me find a nice exit point here. We can park the car and then I'll swap out. I'll go back to the i5 because I drove the i5 in Portugal. So I'm quite experienced with the car by now. And now I know the roads around here too. So I have a feeling I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with that one. I am now in the 530i rear wheel drive and pretty much feels the same right off the bat. Same seating position, same similar interior, but ah, uh, right there instantly that little downshift it has to do to get going out of the corners. Much different than the i5 behind me where it was just instantaneous out of those corners. I mean, the i5 eDrive 40, so rear wheel drive, all electric, five series. Oh, let me tell you, this is so good, so much fun. I mean, look at that instant torque. I mean, I'm in Nate's 
but immediately i mean he has no chance so once again this is one of the main advantages of electric cars right they might not have a lot of soul because they don't have a lot of noise of course that car doesn't sound too great either you know especially with the b48 the b58 will be a different story so you're not losing too much when it comes to that but you are gaining quite a bit especially when it comes to the acceleration i mean of course granted this one has you know 75 70 75 more horsepower so that makes a difference same torque though but it's really the instant torque this instant acceleration that makes a huge difference not just on this road because of course this is not something that you do every day especially not us but um, if you do daily driving and you need to quickly overtake that instant torque from the electric drivetrain will definitely make a difference okay now in sport mode the engine sounds a little bit meaner it's definitely a little bit more responsive on the throttle, but there's just there's just not as much down low. I mean, yeah, it's lighter, but it just doesn't get out of the corners like the i5 does. It just feels a bit slow in this, and it just yeah. That's the big the big difference is acceleration out of corners. Now going through these curves and bends, I can tell you that the i5 feels a little bit more composed. For some reason, it's just a little bit more dynamic in corners. It might be something to do actually with the weight distribution because you have the battery pack in the floor of the car and it's positioned centrally. So that's gonna help with the weight distribution front and rear. I have a feeling this one is closer to 50-50 than the 530i. So maybe that's one of the reasons. But even the body roll doesn't seem to be as much as in the previous one that I just drove. So from that perspective, I actually enjoy it quite a bit. Though, without the M Sport suspension, it still feels really good on this. And that's probably due to it being a, a quite a bit lighter than the i5. So the only really drawback I see immediately is that out of corner acceleration. This is fine for day-to-day -day driving, but loses a little bit of that fun. The downshift sounds really nice though. It still handles really well. A lot of front end feel. It does get a little pushy maybe, but at a entry level to the five series, that's just usually a little bit safer, but I'm also not really pushing it that hard. We are out on public roads and I don't want to do that. So we're having fun, but in a smart way. The brakes do feel nice though. And yeah, just, ah, it's got to wind up so much to get out of the corners. I know in the past, I always recommended people buy the 535D or the 530i. And that was because the diesel had that low end torque which obviously the i5 does as well. These are big cars, they weigh a lot. I think this one's just over 4,000 pounds. That one's like 4,700. So like it needs all that torque to get up and going. And this 530i just, just doesn't seem to have enough of it at that low end RPMs to, to feel like, a, like a, a BMW should, I, I feel like. This is something that you would look to buy if uh, you're just looking to commute more often, not really caring too much about the performance of uh, high-spirited driving, mountain roads like what we're on today. Um, if you want just a comfortable commuter, long-distance road car, this, this is a good choice. That's where this shines, is those long-distance road trips. Then you don't have to worry about charging. Uh, you'll probably get better fuel economy because of the smaller engine. Uh, this is definitely the choice if you're doing a lot of driving. If I wanted to stay with the gas vehicle, I would definitely step up in the model lineup. 530i is just more, uh, it just feels more, and I feel terrible saying this about a BMW, but just a little bit more of a commuter car. It corners very well, it's very balanced, but that lack of low end torque is just, it's Achilles heel. All right, so before I wrap up this one and I get together with Nate to share our impressions of the two cars, let's do a little bit more dynamic driving. So even turning in, I honestly, I feel like you're getting more confidence from the i5 eDrive 40. It just makes you feel like the better driver, the faster driver. It actually makes me feel like I could just get behind the wheel and go fast immediately. Well, with the other car, there was a lot more work to be done inside the car, if that makes sense. 
with this one it's kind of effortless to drive fast of course that's kind of the nature of a lot of the uh, EVs and what I like about the BMW EVs also it's that it's not all about straight line acceleration they still pay attention quite a bit to lateral dynamics you know lateral driving and especially that feel that you're getting from your car because you don't just want to be fast in a straight line right I mean a lot of EVs can do that even a golf car can go quite fast in a straight line but it's also about the driving dynamics and if the car puts a smile on your face and I've said it before in Portugal the i5 definitely does I did enjoy the i5 M60 quite a bit of course a lot more powerful but I did have more fun with the real wheel drive i5 because you can spin the rear wheels a lot more it doesn't have the grip that the i5 M60 X drive has and from a price point of course this one seems to be the better value so if you don't need nearly 600 horsepower and if you don't want a gasoline engine especially a four-cylinder then I would say the i5 eDrive 40 might be the best in the BMW i5 lineup so far the best in a 5 series lineup of course I have yet to drive the 540i there is also a 550xe I believe which is the plug-in hybrid version it's also a six cylinder with the electric motor combined so I'll have a chance to drive that and see how it compares to all of them I've quite an experience right now with the cars I mean I spent so much time with the i5 lately so I'll be able to um, give you a more educated answer at that time but for now this was a quick comparison in between the i5 eDrive 40 and the 530i we're gonna pull up here somewhere we're gonna put a car side by side and then we're gonna tell you what we think and which one is our favorite so don't go anywhere all right Nate so we're back we drove the i5 eDrive 40 530i rear wheel drive which one is your favorite? You know, it's a tough call. I do really enjoy the new 5 Series. Uh, it looks great. They drive great. Um, the 530i is not as good as the i5. Why? <laughs> it's just not. It's, it, it was immediately apparent as soon as I got in that when you go to apply the accelerator, there's just a little bit of lag. You know, it just does that instantaneous torque of the i5 made just all the difference in the world. All right, so I kind of feel the same way, honestly. I feel like 255 horsepower is just not enough for a car of this size. There is definitely turbo lag there. And you might not notice it if you drive daily, maybe in daily traffic, but if you try to corner and go quite speedily driving, yep. then you will definitely notice. I mean, it's a big car. It's quite heavy, even at 4,000 pounds. It is a heavy car. So that was my impression. I know we haven't talked about that clearly, you know, and you will see it in the video. Basically, when you edit the video, that, that's exactly what I just said. <laughs> And I feel like I was having a lot more fun with the i5e Drive 40. It's a rear wheel drive, so that makes it even more exciting because you get a little bit of a tail spin there. It's just yep. fun to have that instant torque, yep. constantly push, and especially on those roads, right? I mean, especially. nice curvy roads. It's nice to go fast in them, exit fast. You know, that's the beauty of this electric car, right? You yep. can exit quickly out yep. of the corner. You don't need to wait for that power band to build up or the torque and all of that. And right? the great thing about it is the M Sport suspension really kind of ties it all together because all that extra weight, it didn't really feel like it in the corner, yeah. you know? It still handled very well, a lot of front end feel and performed really great. It's exactly what I was saying in my review of it is it's more along the lines of someone who's needing a work vehicle and driving all the time. Yeah. Maybe some of those road warriors. Um, therefore, they don't have to stop and charge up. They're not worried about that torque and, and the performance of the corners. Absolutely. They just want a good, comfortable car that gets good fuel economy. So that's why I picked the i5 Horatio. What was your choice though? I mean, clearly, I already said it, the i5 eDrive 40 mostly because you know it's a lot more fun to drive i would only pick the 530i because of the price point it's about yep. nine thousand dollars cheaper which makes a difference in many cases and of course if you don't want to deal with the charging infrastructure if you don't have a charger yep. at home and you still want a 5 series you know then you will go for this one of course we have a dream on the 540i which will be the b58 i'm assuming that's going to be a lot of fun but then again that's probably going to be nine thousand dollars more exactly. than this one right so yep. this will always be the budget level 5 series and if you want a 5 series this is the only choice if you're into uh, spirited mm -hmm. driving if you're looking for the ultimate weekend car probably <laughs> not right yeah. so i mean and i know we're bashing sometimes electric cars because they have no soul but this car didn't feel like it has a lot of soul either right i mean no. the sound wasn't you are there right. that's a very good point felt yep. underpowered and all of that so absolutely the i5 e drive 40. yep i'm with you all right nate so what's next for us well we got something special tomorrow we'll be at the bmw performance center and we will be driving the i5 m60 on track 
which is shocking to me because every time I ask BMW to give me an electric car to go on track, they always say, eh, maybe not. And of course, for <laughs> one single reason, because mm -hmm. if you put any electric car on track, that electric range, uh, it's not gonna work out too well for the car. So I'm actually hoping they're gonna let us drive the car as long as we want. So we're not gonna be limited to a few laps. Yep. And we wanna see really, if you push it hard, how much actually you're gonna lose out of that battery pack. So I'm ready. That's next for us. You guys make sure to subscribe, stay tuned. We have a lot of content coming up from this particular trip. And then we're gonna do some XM driving and all of that. So there is quite a bit. There's a lot of cars to go through. As always, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.